So we're going to talk about the head again. So we have our reference here. And I build this as talking about the eye socket, forehead, temple, cheekbone area, that whole upper area. Uh, and that's true to a degree. We'll get there as we get there. I realize I want to talk about something else first. And this is a uh, thought of as a compositional idea, but it's a powerful construction idea too. Let me get a decent... Um, there we go. Decent uh, tool here. So I want to talk about symmetry. And I've written this word for years. I can never remember if there's one or two M's. An asymmetry. Symmetry becomes a powerful tool. Symmetry is balance. It's safety. It's health. If I've got... And I do a little bit, actually. If I have a, a one eye that's a little droopy or one leg that's a little shorter, biologically, that's not good because that means you can't run away from the cave bears. Maybe you can't see somebody attacking you from that weak eye side. And so when we see symmetry, we equate that with beauty. It's beautiful. And we're all a little asymmetrical. In our certainly in our behavior, but also in our body. I'm left-handed. As a kid, they've evened out a little bit. As a kid, my left shoe was a full size bigger than my right shoe. Now it's about a half size. So we all have a little bit of asymmetry. But the more symmetry we have, the more normal it seems, the more beautiful it seems usually. And the more asymmetrical, it can be the reverse. Or it could just be through a different metric. The more symmetrical, the more boring. The more asymmetrical, the more exciting, the more dramatic. I've got the girl, I lost the girl. Oftentimes when we have those kind of story structures, those kind of aesthetics at play, I had the girl. I lost the girl or the guy. I got the girl back if it's a happy ending. If it's an unhappy ending, it oftentimes ends in asymmetry. I got the girl, I lost the girl. I almost got her back, but I lost her. And now, at least here, I had hope of getting her back. Now it's never gonna happen, Hap unhappy ending. So. Our, we artists love to play with symmetry and asymmetry. And when we tell a story or we create a beautiful image, oftentimes we're playing with that too. Notice we're talking about heads, symmetry. But as I just pointed out, I got a little asymmetry here. Some people will have an ear a little bigger, a little ear a little higher. My mustache might not grow in the same way on both sides, all those kind of things. My nose from my boxing days might be a little crooked and asymmetrical. It can add beautiful character and drama. It can feel unhealthy and ugly and even grotesque if it's super asymmetrical. So there's all sorts of things to play with <clears throat> with that. And so notice we're drawing the head, but notice the head I have here. And most portraits we have, the head will be looking straight on, not very often, but if it does, maybe the eyes will look off. Or if it's looking straight on, Maybe the light isn't straight on. Notice this one here. The head is in a three-quarter. I guess this way for you guys. Head is in a three-quarter. And the lighting is in a three-quarter. Symmetry of subject matter, asymmetrical, asymmetry of position, and not only the position of the form, but the position of the light. And it's not here, it's up here. It's asymmetrical this way as well as this way. That creates more drama and more description. Okay, this is my, uh, my new fantasy world that's going to be even more popular than Lord of the Rings. And there's the dark tower, well, I'm stealing a little bit, I guess, that I got to defeat to save the whole world. Not very 
dramatic and not very descriptive either. But if we could get a little underneath it, or a lot underneath it, and a little or a lot to the side of it, now when we get into an asymmetrical position of a symmetrical, it's got these evil horns here and this evil eye. I made this up all myself. I didn't steal this from anybody. All that symmetry, when we put that in an asymmetrical position, it's more dynamic, more interesting, a better story, and it's more descriptive. We understand that this is a big blocky tower, not a flat piece of cardboard. We understand it's very tall because it's way above us and we and our compatriots are down here. And we understand that it's a boxy structure and not a cylindrical structure as it could well have been. We don't know that until we get into the asymmetrical position to see it. So I can put the whole pose into an asymmetrical position of the symmetrical form, or I can play the symmetry of the symmetrical form in a symmetrical presentation to you and move the light. Notice we have a backlight over here. That's an asymmetrical backlight. I have a soft front light that's off to the side. All asymmetry creates drama and describes form. And that's what we're going to talk about now here. And let's see, let me erase all this because I once again didn't do a layer over it. But that's okay this time. I didn't actually draw on the reference like I used to do. So if we can see that figure in an a symmetrical and asymmetrical position will understand it better. And with some practice, and sometimes a lot, sometimes a little bit of practice, we'll get more and more um, information, understanding, get it on the page, have our process. So I want to understand eventually all of these little structures of the planes of the face and the features and such. And we'll go through most of them over the weeks as much as we can. <clears throat> but... If I can treat this thing very simply, and I can test out how simple and which simple, how simple and which simple. And I'll find that if I'm a little off one way or the other, it probably won't make a ton of difference. I should be a little bit on top of something, I'm a little underneath. Draw it one way when it should be the other. Probably won't make a big difference. A subtle shift won't make a difference. But if I look at this and through symmetry construct it, there's a center line of the face, but the center line is off symmetry. But I know there's an eye socket here and an eye socket here that are much the same, although if I get into a high rendering, a careful portrait, I'll find a subtle asymmetry I might want to celebrate, show off, or I might want to hide and disguise and idealize. So notice the symmetry. And I'm thinking of it as an egg. It gets a little longer down into the right, and so I'm going to make it a little longer down into the left with its mirror image on the other side. And I can go all the way through on that. Here's the mouth here and here. It's going to be more visible on this line, less on that side. And I can place these things out through symmetry. If there's a cheekbone here, and even if it's a little notation, a mark of the cheekbone here, it would make sense if I can see it, because I can't always see it. But if I can see it, I want to show it over here as well. If it swings down from the ear, 
all the way to the chin, even if I can't see the ear. I want to get a bit of a swing over that chin. And any of these things I can make boxier with more corners or rounded with more tubes or rounded with more eggs, anything I want. And when I can start seeing that symmetry, then I can start making sense of the construction. And like a wood carver, I can chisel things off it's very simply and blocky, bro broccoli, blo <laughs> broccoli, I like that, blocky, blo I won't say it, in a block-like manner, we'll say that, how's that, hang in with me there. And we have this beautiful symmetry of features, asymmetry of the parted hair and the bangs swept to the side, symmetry, asymmetry. And it can be very nuanced. I can work down a careful but simplified version of the hairline. Placing the ear. Can't see that other ear, but I'm going to imagine where it would be. I'm going to visualize it. I can only see this, but I'm going to be thinking about this. So I can feel the roundness, even if I can't capture it yet. I need work capturing it. And then we slowly develop and so on and correct and look for different choices and stay with it if we don't feel good about it until it rings true, whatever. And on and on and on, playing that out, trying to find symmetry and asymmetry, the balance in between it. And if we start a little more nuanced, meaning I start with something simple and I got room for error, even though it's not a perfect bucket head, starting with a bucket-like shape helps me find the head, the general big simple position of the head, the general crude but simple proportions and position of the head, and so on. And then we could say, well, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make it a different simple shape. And see if it's better or worse. Be curious. And so on. And still play with that symmetry and asymmetry. And symmetry and asymmetry all the way through. And what we'll find there as we do these things, well, there's a little bit of a brow here. Bumping off the skull down the forehead and out for the eye socket. And if I could feel or actually construct with tracing paper, with a layer, whatever, and I'm not doing a layer, so I better add one. Now the symmetry of this brow to that brow, I can feel that construction over. And the placement of this part of the eye, the iris with that part of the eye, construct it over, just made her look like a little bit of a vampire there. A little spooky, so give her a fang. That fang to that fang. Symmetry. This to this. Now notice when we start seeing that symmetry, even when it's in an asymmetrical position, with a little bit of practice and sometimes kind of pointing it out for us because this is new to us. It's like learning a new language. We're not fluent yet and shouldn't expect ourselves to be. But the bulge here, 
symmetrically, almost like goggles, works with the bulge here. And the bulge below, on this side, in some manner or form, give or take its asymmetrical position, has a symmetry, a relationship. And also, oftentimes you can do a construction line, box-like or ball-like, to find the connection. Box-like or ball-like to find the connection. And what we'll start noticing when we get a little bit better at this, when we don't have to worry about those beginning steps, we can get fluent and comfortable. We can acclimate to that new challenge of seeing in a new way and having a plan of getting what we see down on the page. We can then start to see maybe, dramatic pause, <clears throat> that the values cling to those symmetrical structures. Whether they're an asymmetrical lighting situation or not. So notice where it gets really dark right here. Make sure you have on a layer. And um, get rid of that. Now I'm over on our reference here. Where it gets really dark right here, even though it's in an asymmetrical position, even though the lighting is in an asymmetrical position to the asymmetrical position, there is symmetry there. Notice that this darker shadow, well, we don't even have to know what it is, this darker tone, is sidled up against these lighter tones. And I'm going to cheat on the perspective here quite a bit. The front plane is going into two corner planes. I radicalize those corner planes, but they're corner planes. The two, the front plane is going into a corner plane and a corner plane. And this is a skinny corner plane. And this is a fatter corner plane. And this is a darker half tone. And this is a lighter shadow. See it there. See it there. And notice the symmetry that happened. And then those corner planes goes into another little corner plane, which is over here. We'll color code it. Just a little sliver, a bigger chunk, because this is facing towards our eye, and this is going around the other side. And I think of that like uh, if we drew a pickle barrel a bulging cylinder, we'd have a slat right here. And this would be just about as wide. And then this would be more and more narrow. And if it's bulging, it would curve. If it's a straight true, it, these would get ever more bulgy. And these would stay straight and get more and more narrow.
fatter and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, and it would go both directions, thinning out visually, thinning out visually, fattening up visually. They're all the same thickness. We took them all apart and measured them, but this is getting fatter, this is getting skinnier. This is staying very fat too. This is getting super thin because this is right in the middle of our slatted tube or barrel. And this is over on the edge of it. See how that works? I'm thinking of symmetry again. Symmetry again. So we'll start to notice that all of the the um, all of the planes have a symmetry to them. It's almost perfect. It might be in slightly imperfect, of course. And what we see on this side will be over here if it's visible. It will just be foreshortening at a slower, faster rate, or not at all, depending on the position. <clears throat> and we'll kind of look for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and think of things, no matter how simple or how complicated, through symmetry and asymmetry. So I've got this symmetrical form. What's on this side is on this side. What's on the top is more or less on the bottom. It's in an asymmetrical position, but the structure itself is symmetrical. And then the lighting on it what drops into shadow might be symmetrical or might be asymmetrical. In this case, only the front plane is going into shadow. Everything else is in light. Light source must be over here. And then we can make it more and more nuanced, more and more complicated. We can say, what can we say here? We can say that is a symmetrical form in an asymmetrical position. And only the front plane is in shadow. There's two light sources maybe. We don't even care why at this point. This is lighter, this is lighter. Symmetry. And even though it's in an asymmetrical position, shifting a little bit that way, falling down away from us a little bit that way, <clears throat> we can feel that symmetry. This is equal to that, even though visually there's more here and less there, and I want to pay attention to that. Does that feel like it's <clears throat> so much less that it doesn't feel the same as that, or does it feel like it's the same amount just getting lost around the corner? So we're going to want to look for that. <clears throat> All these front planes get a little or a lot darker, depending. A little or a lot darker, depending. All the side planes <clears throat> get a little or a lot lighter, depending. All the top planes get a little or a lot lighter, depending. Side planes and top planes, lighter. Side planes and or top planes, lighter. A little top, a little to the side, a little lighter. A lot top <clears throat> on the top, a lot to the side, a lot lighter. Everywhere. And what's over here, we'll have a sliver of that truth, a sliver of that reality on the other side showing clearly or just getting lost behind here, maybe here. Symmetry. So we want to watch for that symmetry and asymmetry. We can't do much with it now because we're still learning, but eventually that's going to be critical for making things incredibly dynamic and incredibly realistic if that's your goal. So how do we begin with that with a little bit of time we have left after all of that. What the heck are we going to do with it? 
guess we better keep that. <clears throat> so what I want to start doing now at the very beginning is looking for the symmetry and the asymmetry of all the choices I make. And I'm going to be patient with myself. This is something new for me, maybe, which means by definition, I'm not going to be very good at it. So I shouldn't expect to be good at it. I should just be expecting to make some progress with it. And if you have that more kindly parent kind of attitude to the new part of you that's a child learning for the first time, taking his or her first steps, holding a pencil for the first time, making a simple version of the head for the first time. You treat that kindly as you would your child and be patient even as you wish they could move along a little quicker. So do that for yourself. So whatever I choose to do, I should start with the right tool. And what I want to feel is a simple yet characteristic shape that holds the position and some bit, and maybe sometimes a lot of the character of it. And I can be, as I become more fluent in my craft and clear on my vision of what I'm seeing and how to translate it down, I'll look for that simple shape that's pretty symmetrical. It's an egg. What's on this side, give or take its position and my inability to get it perfect. Uh, there's symmetry there. And one of the wonderful things about art, there's a lot. Imperfections can be glorious. They can be better than perfection because the imperfection, what many would see as mistakes screw-ups, errors, with wise eyes, with the, uh, the um, wisdom of perspective, having moved forward, we look back at those things, God, I kept screwing that up. Oh my God, now five years later, 10 years later, we don't call that my mistakes, we call that my style. That's my style. I make those flesh tones too light, a little more like clouds in real flesh. That's wrong. No, it's my style. I use a lot of lost edges. That's wrong. No, it's my style. I make things too big and bulky and, and, uh, and uh, muscular. That's not wrong. That's my style. These are heroes. These are cloud-like gods, like Olympus, whatever. So... Forgive your imperfections. Just get it close enough so it doesn't bother you too much because the way you do things that are a little wrong could lead you to wonders. Could be the basis of your career, of most of your joy. Boy, I just make those colors too bright. Oh my God, they're not too bright. Those shadows are luminous with the right perspective. So careful how you correct yourself. So, I use those construction lines that are based on symmetry and do whatever process based on symmetry while being aware of asymmetry and being willing to try a few times to get it right. And when I have more time, I'll make it a little more nuanced, a little more characteristic of what I see. and so on. We'll just stop there. And I can always mash up these things. It's one of my favorite strategies. I won't just do a ball. I'll do a ball and some boxy ideas. There's where the eyebrows are. There's where the eyes are. They're in symmetrical parallel position going down this way. 
three quarter position going across this way, I'm going to have this go in the same, that was off a little bit, go back into symmetry, same boxy position of all these front planes. Where the cheekbone bulges and maybe falls towards the mouth in symmetry, where it bulges, falls towards the mouth, bulges. And I slowly construct it or quickly construct it, keep it simple or build that simplicity into a, amazing complexity. And then what I'm going to want to start noticing is that the eye for all of its beauty is just a ball in a hole. The lids go over the ball. The iris is painted on the ball. The cornea bulges off of the ball. <clears throat> the hole is the socket. We have this beautiful brow ridge and we tend to see this glorious light and shadow pattern happening that partially or completely shades the eye. That ball tucks over into the lower lid, it gets darker as the brow turns into the crater of that socket, it gets darker as it comes up towards the forehead, which is beginning roughly at where the eyebrow, the hair of the eyebrow is, it moves into light. And now more and more and more as we move up that ball, more and more and more of this comes into light. If we can understand it simply, if we can understand the symmetry and asymmetrical dynamic between, we can get a ton accomplished. It can ring true. And if we can take something that's awful complicated, look at all those stair steps of structure. It's a lot of complication. Easy to screw that up, even easy to make it overwhelming, easy to feel stressed and just want to walk away. It's too hard. If we can learn to return to simplicity, well, if it wasn't this face with these features, the anatomy, the laws of life, portion, proportions, canons of beauty, oh my God, what if it was just a beautiful egg? in the same position as this beautiful head with the same angle of this beautiful light. Can I imagine, or can I actually find an egg? This isn't quite an egg, but I, can I find an egg and hold it up and see how it's lit like my model on the stand? Bring egg, an egg with me. <clears throat> I wouldn't keep it in my pocket, but you might want to try that. <clears throat> then Notice that it would kind of do that. That is a very simplified version of that. And as this bumps down the brow, I could imagine how the shadow might bump. And as this bumps into the eye socket, I could understand how this shadow would also bump in the eye socket. As it comes out of the wedge of the nose, I could understand how that nose would be a wedge that sticks out from the ball. And so it's going to catch more light than the ball at that point, and so on. And I could imagine how this is the apple, the cheek, as she grins and pulls back and swells that cheekbone it would change the shape of that egg choice. And now this is a much cruder, not near as elegant idea as that. And that's a much cruder, not near as elegant idea as that, but it gets the point across. It makes some sense. And I know if I'm kind to my creative child, I can slowly get better at that craft. What was a wobbly little 
walk holding a hand becomes this sprint across the playground very quickly if we allow that confidence to build and be patient and kind and supportive. And when getting in trouble, we go back to baby steps. So that's what we want. So with that in tow, I think we'll stop there. This is really just a, as it turned out, a uh, the foundational, the prologue to then all the structures of the uh, of the forehead and the eye socket and the brow ridge and the temple and the upper cheekbone. So next time we'll come back in and we'll actually look at those structures and see how they build as architecture. The same architecture we would have, I don't really have the architecture around here, but the same architecture we have of the cornice of the corner of an old library in New York or in Europe or something, the architecture of that. Beautiful profile. of that cornice on the plaster that supports the corner of that lovely study hall or something. All of this architecture that pushes out and steps in, rounds across, that groups together and separates apart, that catches light and catches shadow, that has symmetry and or asymmetry. There's simple architecture here too. And we can make it super simple or incredibly nuanced or somewhere in between. And we want to start simple, but we're going to do a special kind of simple. And then we'll build on that and we'll build a little bit at a time with more and more knowledge, more and more craft skill, more and more hopeful success and the joy of creation involved and end up with something like that sooner than you think. All right, so I'm gonna stop there.